Hello United, my name is Vlad, most of you know me. I want to announce our next prayer worship night that's going to take place on November 18th at 7 p.m. So mark your calendars. Last time when we got together, it was awesome. We were worshiping, we were praying, and 68 people raised their hands to pray, and they were prayed for. They were renewing their repentance, some may be repenting for the first time, but they felt the Holy Spirit move in His presence there. Something happens when we call upon the name of Jesus Christ and we worship Him and we pray to Him and we ask Him to change our hearts. So I welcome you to come on November 18th at 7 p.m. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome like always. And we're going to have tea and coffee afterwards. I'll see you there. Hello church. Everybody in the lobby, come on in. We're waiting for you guys. We're about to start. Anybody have a hard time getting to church today? Or was it at ease? Uh, it's great that we are here because, um, you know, uh, things happen and uh, some people have good intentions, but Satan knows what's happening. The devil knows. He's going to put uh, a bunch of stumbling blocks, barriers for our mornings, try to take our peace away, try to uh, have us not come in here. And uh, this morning, we, f we, me and me, Nicholas and Sam got out, and uh, we're heading out. I'm like, the car's not driving right. Next thing you know, flat tire. Out of nowhere, flat tire right before the service. We're pulling the truck out. It's okay, we have options, got the truck out, got here, but it's great to be here, guys, and um, I want to say that uh, Apostle Paul in Ephesians, when he uh, wrote the letter to the Ephesians, I want to read it before we pray, uh, just for uh, our support, for a reminder for us that through the tough times we do encounter them, that... Uh, Christ is there for us. And we read in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask for the worship team to get ready as, um, as we're going to pray right now. Everybody, if you guys can get up. Father God, we are gathered here and we want to thank you that you made all of this possible for us, that you made salvation possible for us when we were lost, when we were weary. You made it possible, Father God. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for dying for our sins. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. And we ask you that you work in our hearts today as we worship the Father for you to give us guidance to speak to our hearts and help everybody who is coming here and bless this morning's service. Amen. Thank you. 
chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark, Yeah. 
yourself because of evildoers, but not envious of wrongdoers. They will soon fade like grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land of, and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and the justice as, as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. For you not yourself over the one who prospers in the way, over the man who carries out evildoers. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. For you not yourself, it tends only to do evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off. For But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. And though you look carefully at this place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. The wicked plots against the righteous, righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those who say it is upright. This sword shall enter their own hearts and their bows shall be broken. Better is the little that the righteousness has than the, than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, but their heritage will remain forever. They are not to put, they are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance. This is a great reminder to us of what is, will come in the future, that we know what comes to us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, I pray that you, that you, and for thankfulness that you allowed us to gather here today in your, in your house, Lord, that we may talk, that we may glory in your name, Lord. And I pray that when we look here, when we listen to the sermon on Acts, Lord, how the Jews plotted to kill Paul, who is called to, who is a servant of you, Lord, and called to be an apostle of our own true, one and only living
Okay, now we're going to have our announcements. Oh, I was kind of quick. Let's go back. Okay, I think this is the beginning. All right, as you guys know, we have our traditional uh, service in Russian at 9.30, followed by uni United Service right now at 12, and our evening service at 5 p.m. There's ways to give. You have options. You can Zelle. You can uh, PayPal. There's ways to do it right here. Scala Bible Study is on Monday, uh, tomorrow from 7 to 9. And um, there's your topic, Filthy rich Riches. Okay, education is power. This is happening today um, at 7 p.m. Uh, we have the speaker, Yuli Simbal. Uh, everybody 16 and older are welcome. And this is our Twisted Truth Youth Service. Shoe boxes. Um, I heard this is going to be all due next Sunday. So if you haven't turned in your shoebox, um, please do so. And uh, this is uh, the New Year's Youth uh, Igra uh, journey. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, I've heard they're going to combine. Um, there's groups. I don't know if they're full. I heard they might be full. I don't know if there's space. But there's going to be kind of a Christian kind of a comedy club or um, so there's some kind of be some kind of a comedy include uh, going to be with uh, with it's going to be Christian. If you come and there's groups are full, you can be just participating, sitting there watching. Uh, it's going to be uh, when this is going to be um, December 31st, New Year's. a church viber group if you haven't um if you if you want to know like all the notifications i believe this one is going to be uh russian and all kind of in use so if you don't speak russian i don't know if you should add yourself to this one youth donations uh ten dollars monthly uh we ask youth to also get involved we do um a lot of projects um, if you if you want to sing and you feel like you have the gift and uh, you're sitting out, they are always calling to join the youth choir. So you can reach out to Anna Golegina. There's her number. Little Lamb Ministries. Um, I haven't seen this one. Uh, so we invite all children ages 2 to 4, all to join during the service for a short lesson, games and fun. Classrooms number 3 and 4, every Sunday at 9.30 and 5. So this is during the Russian services. Uh, if you have kids, um, you can bring them, and those are the room numbers. Media is always um, trying to improve and get more people involved up there. So if you feel like you want to learn more about computers and audio and lights, um, reach out to any church leader and uh, speak up. This here uh, is, a, is a medical expenses that people are gathering for this kid who needs medical expenses. If it's on your heart to donate, uh, you can do so here through GoFundMe. And as you know, we do have youth small groups, uh, Dima Navak uh, and Costa. Uh, there's their numbers there. All right. Um, all right, we've seen this one. This is going to happen next Saturday. Uh, this is going to be our third time as we gather together for United Worship Group uh, prayer night. Um, we welcome everybody here going to be at 7 p.m. We should have another slide that has like, because we did surveys last week, and uh, we got almost 100 results back. I'll, I'll have you guys turn it on. I don't know. My clicker doesn't get me there. Um, almost 100, per, uh, 100 people participated, and we want to say thank you for everybody who participated. Um, all those results were taken into consideration. Um, you can see you can see it here. 
Um, some things we have been trying here that for the first time, why do we do all this stuff? We want to get more people, we want to get you guys plugged in. We want to get you guys participating, not for just certain leaders come up here. And these are some ways where we were doing it, like you know the history presentation, that was new. Some people kind of like, eh. Uh, somebody liked it, somebody didn't. But that's why you see new things, as we want to get you guys all involved. Um, and then we asked about preachers. Looks like a lot of votes were kind of to do a mix, where our brothers come out preach, and then we invite guests to preach. With that said, we will, our next service, United, we will have, um, we will have guest speakers, we will have guest uh, music group come, I believe it's from Bright, and the speaker is going to be Ed uh, Puzenkov, and um, so just letting you know, next, uh, next United service come, and there's going to be guests. Okay, so... That's it for our announcements. Again, thank you for the surveys, for your feedback. Whatever you guys wrote down is still going to be looked into for more improvement. And for our next song, we're going to have our worship group come on stage. Is it scary to sing up here? No? <laughs> Your love, your love, oh, living water, 
cross of Calvary, he declares his work is finished. He has spoken this hope to me. Though the sun has ceased its shining, though the war appeared as lost, Christ has triumphed over evil. It was finished upon the cross. Now the curse it has been broken. Jesus paid the price for me. Full of pardon he has offered. Great the welcome that Good afternoon, church. I'm going to have everyone stand. We're going to pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for each and every person that was able to make it to church today. And please bless my sermon. Please bless the words that I'm about to speak so that everything that I would say would not come from my own wisdom, but from the wisdom of the Word of God and from your own uh, heavenly wisdom. Please bless the people's hearts so that they would approve of this message, and take it into their hearts. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So in, in continuation with uh, our series in Acts, um, I'm going to have you guys open up to the main uh, section of our sermon today. That's going to be in Acts chapter 23. I'll give you guys a chance to open that up. It would be Acts tr chapter 23, and we're going to be reading from verses 12. The next morning, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. More than 40 men were involved in this plot. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have taken a solemn oath not to eat anything until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the Sahandran petitioned the commander to bring him before you on the pretext of wanting more accurate information about his case. We are ready to kill him before he gets here. But when the son of Paul's sister heard of this plot, 
he went into the barracks and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the commander. He has something to tell him. So he took him to the commander. The centurion said, Paul, the prisoner, sent for me and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took the young man by the hand, drew him aside, and asked, What is it that you want to tell me? He said, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul before the Sanhedrin tomorrow on the pretext of wanting more accurate information about him. Don't give in to, him, to them, because more than 40 of them are waiting in ambush for him. They have taken an oath not to drink, not to eat or drink until they have killed him. They are ready now waiting for your consent to the request. The commander dismissed the young man and cautioned him, don't tell anyone that you have reported this to me. Now, in my previous sermon, I did mention how the Jews were very skeptical of Paul and they really wanted to get rid of him. And they did the same with Jesus. They did the same with every single disciple that wanted to preach the word of God. And something that the Jews really upheld for themselves as a standard was the Ten Commandments and the law in the Torah. And something that you notice is that they're definitely not intending to follow the law of the Ten Commandments. And in the Ten Commandments, there's a very famous sin that we know to not commit, which is the commitment of murder, the killing of someone without reason. And uh, something that I notice is that Hatred really brings someone to, re to murder. The, be the roots of murder comes from hatred and anger or jealousy. And if we open up to Ephesians 4.26, it says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So we can ask ourselves, why, why are the Jews acting out on their anger? And it's, the obvious answer is because they don't have the love of God in their hearts. We already know that. But Jesus taught before that in order to avoid murdering someone, to avoid the temptation of murdering someone, you have to deal with your anger. A lot of us definitely have had moments, because we're all human, we have had moments where we were angry with someone. We were annoyed or angry with someone, or we had jealousy in our hearts, and we wanted to do something to the person to get rid of that anger. Um, and one thing that really stands out when someone is in the heat of anger, they're not really thinking about loving the person. When Jesus was angry with the Pharisees in the temple, he wasn't acting out on hatred against them. He wanted to save, he wants to save every single person. And what he did was he went and tore everything apart, but he did not touch the Pharisees. He didn't, ta he didn't touch any people. He only took down all the, all the, uh, the whole marketplace, everything that they were selling, but he never touched the Pharisees. And I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys to turn to another uh, chapter. It would be Matthew chapter 5, verses 21. And Matthew writes, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to ju judgment. But I will tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sahandran. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. So, as Jesus was preaching this, this is exactly how the Jews are behaving. Instead of being loving and uh, making sure their anger is in control, they're acting out on their anger and they're plotting against Paul which is leading to murder. And all the Jews know about the Ten Commandments. They know that it's a sin to murder. 
However, they give in to their anger, and now they don't even care about the Ten Commandments, even though that is their highest standard. And that's what anger does to us. We sometimes forget about the law, about higher standards, and we act out on our own impulses. And I wanted to give you guys a note. Um, in verse 22, it says, again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, and I did some research on what that means. It means in Aramaic, pretty much worthless, empty-headed, fool, pretty much a really terrible insult that you say in Aramaic. And then it also says, whoever says, you fool. If you're calling someone a fool or you hear someone calling a fool, just make sure you point that out in, the, in this verse, that whoever, says, whoever calls another person a fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So as Christians, we should take note for ourselves that before we start calling people fools or calling someone stupid, we should try to first tell them why they're wrong and tell them what are the characteristics of a fool rather than just immediately pointing at them and saying, you fool. And one thing that Jesus really wanted to preach about all the time is what is in the person's heart. He didn't care about what the Jews regarded as the high standard, but Jesus took the high standard and made it, made it into an even more high standard. So he didn't abolish the law. He, in, in, he did the exact opposite. He actually made it even more define, definable. What he did, what he, would, he would tell the people, instead of just making sure you're not murdering, you're not killing anyone, you also should fix up your anger in your heart because that is the root of your sin. And, for example, or for adultery, he didn't say, don't go just uh, avoiding adultery. You should fix the lust in your heart. And in here, in, in this topic of anger, we should know that anger is an emotion just like sadness, happiness, depression, any sort of type of emotion. It's not a sin because this is what everyone goes through. We all have our moments of anger. But if you remember the first verse that we read, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you still are angry. If you're dwelling on your anger, that produces sin. If you have an angry moment, Anger is just a sign for yourself to know that something's wrong. Something needs to be fixed. However, but if you dwell on that anger, if you are dwelling all the time on something that displeased you, that is what births sin. This is where the thoughts of murder, thoughts of revenge, thoughts of doing something that you shouldn't do to another person. And... You should ask yourselves, am I really that important if someone insults me? Are you really that important that you need to take revenge on that person? Someone calls you a fool. Is that really your responsibility to take revenge on that person? If someone hurts you or throws a punch at you, it says in the Bible to turn the other cheek. Is it really your responsibility to take revenge on the person that uh, laid a hand on you? Are you really that important that you need to act out on your anger? Do you have a right to act on your anger? And in the Bible, it says, no, you have no right to act on your anger because that is what produces sin. And then we're going to turn to another uh, passage. We're going to go to Psalms, Psalms chapter 11. And we're going to be reading from verses 5. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence his soul hates. On the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. Those who hate violence, Lord hates. If you love violence, if you love holding grudges, if you have no room for forgiveness for other people, the Lord does not, is not pleased by you. The Lord has, uh, he has a parable that he speaks about where someone, uh, some high ruler and his servant, 
the servant has a, a sort of debt to him. He owes him money. And the high ruler decides to forgive him. And the servant goes to his own servant and demands the debt from him. And then when the high ruler finds this out, he says, why didn't you forgive your servant the way I forgave you? And he pretty much tosses him into jail and uh, puts him into torment. The same way with God. Why should God forgive you if you have no room to forgive someone else? If you're so angry and you're so focused on yourself that you're not able to let go and forgive the wrongdoing of someone else, why should God forgive your wrongdoings? And this is where we should be really careful with our spiritual walk with our God is that if we have this one person in mind that we can never forgive, God will most likely not be able to forgive you when you enter into his kingdom. And uh, one thing that is a little bit not as great to hear is that, yes, there will be people that are against us just because we're Christians, just because we preach the word, just because we preach the truth, we will be persecuted by others, and the Bible does not give us leeway to retaliate, which means we will be oppressed. We will have nothing we can do against the people that basically gives the right to, for other people to oppress us, but we can't oppress them back. However, we should know that the vengeance is not ours. Vengeance is the Lord's. If someone is oppressing you, you know what you should do? You get on your knees and you pray. You pray for them either to be able to come to you for forgiveness and quit their actions, or God will be able to take care of the situation that you're in and turn it into something good. And this is going to be the second part of my sermon. The first part was about anger, how we should not deal, with, we should not behave like the Pharisees did or how the Jews did. We should not act out on our anger. But the second part is how we can rely on the Lord's protection, just how Paul relied on the Lord's protection. We're going to turn to Romans chapter 12. And we're going to be reading from verses 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice in those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take my revenge, my friends, but leave room for, the God, for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How many times have you guys been misled or, or taken advantage of or something? someone has done something wrong to you and you held on to that for a bit? And... Instead of deciding to repay for good, you decide to repay with him with evil and then ended up feeling good about yourself. Something that I realize is that when I repay someone that did something wrong to me, when I repay him with good, the the, what the Bible says, you will keep burning coals, they feel incre incredible shame for what they did for, to me when I act out in good when I repay their evil with good. And the problem with our world is it teaches us pretty much the old ways of the New Old Testament. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. If someone does you something wrong, you do the same exact thing back to them. If someone does you wrong, you have to take revenge. Revenge is a really big word today. We always want to take revenge and have justice. But it's not in our place to take justice. It's not in our place to repay someone with evil. God is in control of everything. He can control whether you die today, whether you die tomorrow, or whether you'll live in the next 20 years. 
And it doesn't go, this, it's, it's not only you that he's in control over. He's in control of every single person over here. Over, it, over here in this church and all the way in Asia. He's in control of every single little detail of this earth. So if you're going to act out on God's commands, what's stopping him to repay your evil with even more evil? If you're going to keep acting out on evil, he can send even more evil to your doorstep. However, if you act on good, the Lord never, never fails those who obey his commandments. And those that, those that choose to forgive and pray over their persecutors, it, God can always change the persecutor to become a follower of Jesus. And Paul is a perfect example of that. He used to persecute the Christians. And then God transformed his life. And then we're going to turn to another uh, passage. We're going to go to Psalms again. But this time we're going to go all the way to chapter 41. And we're going to read from verses 1. Blessed is he who has regard for the weak. The Lord delivers him in times of trouble. The Lord will protect him and preserve his life, and he will bless him in the land and not surrender him, surrender him to the desires of his foes. We have this, if you can call it, a calming moment where we know that God is in control and in Psalms, it gives us this promise that those, that those that we try to bless the weak, if we try to bless the weak and we try to help those that cannot help themselves, God will always spare his vengeance on those who are against you. He will not let your foes take over you. And Paul, Paul instead of acting out on anger and trying to plot something against the Jews, he instead just tells the boy, let the commander know what's happening. And he wanted no revenge against the Jews, if you would notice that. No revenge against the Jews that wanted to kill him. And Paul always remained loyal to God. Paul always wanted to make sure he followed God's commandments and remained pure in his walk with God. And as you can see, psalm, this psalm right here, where verses 1 through 2, it gave, gives us this promise that your foes will surrender. There, there, there's no way your foes will take over you if you're walking with God. If you're walking with God, whom shall you fear? It says that in the Bible. Who sh shall you fear if you're walking with God? In your darkest moments. Because if God, God is all you have, God is all you need. God will always supply you with whatever you need. And if we all remember that in our hearts and make sure if we have something going on in our lives where someone is against us or someone wants to do harm towards us, and instead of retaliating and trying to prove ourselves worthy of something, instead we should deny ourselves, get on our knees and pray to God and ask for forgiveness if we acted our, out on our anger and also pray for the forgiveness of your foes, of your enemies. Let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing all the people here. I pray that you take the words out of my mouth and use them as a tool so that people would be able to learn more about you and your word so that they would be able to change their ways and be able to come to you for forgiveness. I pray for every single person so that they would come close to you every single day and that in their spiritual walk they wouldn't stumble as much, but they would rely on your word and on the Holy Spirit to guide them. And I pray so that everyone would be able to come home safely and bless every single person in here. Amen. You guys are dismissed. <laughs>